You know, air travel sure has changed here at Northwest over the last 60 years. There was a day when this Hamilton airplane was the pride of the fleet. There were other airplanes too back in that goggles and scarf and helmet days, the Wacos and the Stinson, the old trimotor. They were all fine airplanes in their day. We started in October of 1926 as Northwest Airways. What dreams we had then. We started out carrying airmail and freight with the hope of eventually carrying passengers. In 1927, we started carrying passengers, carried 106 of them that year. That was a lot back then. Nowadays, we put more than four times that on just one airplane. But even back then, Northwest meant more than just airplanes. It meant people. And the people who started this airline had a spirit. I guess you'd call it pride. Pride in their job, pride in their company. This spirit is still alive today. The names and faces have changed, but one thing remains the same. Northwest people are devoted to and have pride in their job. I'd like to tell you something about this company you work for. Frankly, it's the best airline in the world. And I'll bet Colonel Lewis H. Britton intended it to be. Colonel Britton, with the help of 29 Detroit and St. Paul investors, created Northwest Airways. Mail service began October 1st, 1926, between the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul and Chicago. Northwest rented two planes to get started, and soon after that took delivery of three brand new Stinson Detroiters. Passenger service was inaugurated in July of 1927, again between the Twin Cities and Chicago. The price? $40 one way. In 1928, the airline began expansion westward through the Dakotas, Canada, and Montana. Expansion continued during the 30s, even though the country was caught up in a worldwide depression. With the opening of the Seattle station in May of 1934, Northwest found it necessary to purchase faster, more efficient aircraft, planes such as the 10A Electra and the beloved DC-3 began gracing the skies of the Midwest with the Northwest Airlines logo proudly displayed on the side of each plane. Before the decade ended, flight attendants were added and a new era of air travel had begun. We had to shift gears in the 40s. The start of World War II put Northwest into a new capacity. Northwest stepped in to help Uncle Sam's war effort. A bomber modification center was opened at Holman Field in St. Paul, and Northwest modified over 3,000 bombers for service in various theaters of the war. At that point, we were the only civilian organization in the United States chosen to install top secret radar. Wartime also saw Northwest flying military supply routes into Alaska. And when peace returned, those routes were used to bring Northwest to the Orient. We went to places like Shanghai and Manila. In fact, Northwest was the first U.S. airline to fly into Tokyo and to Seoul, establishing ourselves as a major international carrier by the late 40s. In 1954, Donald W. Nyrop took over as president of Northwest. At age 42, Nyrop was the youngest president of a major U.S. airline. Through the 50s, Northwest continued to expand, beginning service to Florida, New York, and more of the Orient. To introduce the public to our new service, Northwest featured comedian Buster Keaton in a very successful television advertising campaign. Northwest In 1959, we entered the jet age with the purchase of Lockheed Electras. In the early 60s, a modernization program helped to improve and expand our flight schedules by adding fan jet airplanes. The 70s saw the advent of wide-body airplanes, Douglas DC-10s and Boeing 747s. By the mid-70s, we flew to more than 35 cities in North America and the Orient. Northwest has continued to expand service over the years, carefully selecting new markets and tying together existing routes and stations. In 1979, Northwest started flying across the Atlantic. We are now the third largest U.S. carrier in the Atlantic region, serving eight cities in Northern Europe. 
Northwest has grown to be the largest U.S. air carrier across the Pacific. We fly to more of the Orient from more U.S. cities than any other airline. And it's a well-balanced system. Half of our business comes from domestic travel, the other half from international traffic. Our domestic route system is designed to feed customers to our international flights, and this helps to make the company more efficient and more profitable. We now own more full-size 747s than any other U.S. airline. In 1985, we put Boeing 757s into service, bringing our fleet to more than 130 modern and efficient jet aircraft. For the future growth of Northwest Orient Airlines, we as employees must continue to provide a level of service unmatched by any other airline. Since we offer the finest in equipment and the most affordable fares around, passengers have come to depend on our special kind of service. As part of the Northwest professional team, that's where you come in. When we say service, we mean keeping the airline on schedule, making sure the passengers receive their baggage, and being as helpful as possible. Whether or not you have direct contact with the traveling public, the job you do for Northwest makes a difference in what people think of us. As Northwest continues to grow, I'm sure you'll continue to grow along with us. So welcome aboard to an exciting and new career at Northwest Orient Airlines.